Hey Wizard, so everything has changed. Everything looks different again and I wanted to do a very quick video. There's going to be a lot of videos coming up for this channel soon. You know, I've been away developing like a mad person with this platform and you know, the new version, the new platform went up yesterday and thanks very much to those of you who've literally already written in and have said, hey, you know, I've noticed there's an, an issue, for example, with foreign exchange, you know exactly who you are. So thank you for that. And, you know, just ironing out, you know, teething problems, etc. And it's it's looking really strong. Um, I'm so much happier with it than what we were sort of testing out before. But I know what it's like. It's very jarring when a platform changes. Everything looks different. Um, there's different functionality. We don't know what things are. And there's no explanation for, you know, how this all works. So around the site, what I've done is I've tried to put, you know, text and explanation for things that don't make much sense in places. Um, I do need to add some tool tips in, but I will be doing, you know, training courses, etc., cetera, et cetera, talking about, you know, arbitrage and data structure and feature engineering and getting the most out of machine learning for anyone, right? These, you, you, you can be anyone to do this stuff. And that's the whole point. Um, but before I get into talking about just very quickly navigating the data side, because I think right now that's the starting point for everyone is, okay, I need to, you know, I'm going to get some data for the machine learning or the Z-score, etc. I wanted to say thank you to FMP. This is a provider. You can see they're here on Crypto Wizards. We've got, you know, the Binance Exchange. We've got Poloniex. You can upload your own data sets. But FMP were so responsive and so supportive in my communication with them. I actually decided to to actually make this video about saying thank you to a vendor, which I never do. Like I never do that. But you know, it, it speaks volumes to me when when you find kindness in the marketplace, right? When you're speaking with startups and you're speaking with businesses, it's very much about me, 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 me. This happens a lot. I had the complete opposite with Financial Modeling Prep. This is the name of the com company, Financial Modeling Prep. Uh, here's their website, by the way. Here's their um, API documentation. You can check them out. These guys are fantastic and their API is wicked cool. And, you know, I wrote to a number of providers. Most of them all came back, but I like these guys the most, um, mainly because of how they were towards me, but also because of their API. It had everything in that we use and need typically for crypto wizards. And so, you know, if they are watching this video, I will send it to them just to say, hey, um, you know, thank you, but thank you. Because all of us here at Crypto Wizards, we benefit, um, you know, we're not some huge business raking it in. And, you know, to have support from companies that can provide data or, or help us out uh, in the way that you have, um, it actually means a lot because it improves the value so much for myself and everyone who actually is going to be using and is already using this platform to, you know, to find an edge in the financial markets. So a big thank you to you. Now, with that said, let's actually get started. You know, I'll come back to FMP in a moment, but here you just select your data provider. So for example, I could select Binance. And if I wanted to see all, you know, cryptos available on Binance, I could hit a star and they will all just appear here. The other thing I can do is, you know, just type in, for example, chain link, and it'll give me all the different, you know, link examples and, and whatnot. So that's how it works. Now with FNP, when you select that, you actually have these helpers at the bottom. You don't need to click on them. Okay. They are just here to help you to give you the search. So let's say, I'm interested in Forex, for example, right? So here I could put in GBP and it will tell me every single pair available that I can, you know, extract data from to do machine learning and co-integration or whatever you want to do, Z-score, um, pairs trading on, you know, GBP related pairs, etc. Uh, here, there could be one for stocks. The list of stocks is way too long, okay? It's just way too long. And this is nothing to do with FMP. This is just there's a lot of stocks in the world. And so it's too much like the browser slowed down dramatically when we put the search in for stocks. So for example, uh, here, if I select all, it gives you like examples of, you know, stocks, and then it's got etc. So you know, if you're looking for a stock, go and find the ticker like there's loads of stocks available, probably you already know them off by heart. But let's say I want to do, for example, Apple and Google, right? So I'm going to add in Apple and I'm going to add in Google. So here are two stocks. You can add up to five. And so you can actually have data joined for you for anything 
up front. Um, so I'm just going to, you know, add those two there. And let's say I want a year's worth of daily data. I'm not going to do anything crazy in this video. I just wanted to make this very quick video to sort of explain what's going on with the data builder, because there's a lot of um, functionality here. So you get to the stage and you're like, okay, do I want to get the data now? Do I want to run it now? Or do I want to add more information? So if you run it now, you can put in the file name you want to save it as and you're good to go. Like it'll just do it. Here I'll go more info. So maybe I want daily log return and, um, you know, I don't know, uh, RSI or maybe MACD added and you can change, you know, the filters if you want to or just leave the recommended standard ones there. It's fine. But down at the bottom here, there's another section for relationships. So, you know, for you guys, this is this is going to be really useful. I use it all the time already. Like it was hard when developing this not to use the development version because it was just so much better. Right. So here I can say, OK, I want co-integration, i.e. I want a Z score. Right. And I want I wanted comparing the close of Apple to, say, Google and the close of Google. And there it's added co-integration in. I can add a projected value, you know, tell me what the future was on the data set because I want to use it for machine learning. I don't actually use this and, and the historical one here either. Here you can put in returns, the size of the move, the difference, etc. Correlation. Um, typically, I would just here, I'll just go here to add in two. There's two things I think are valuable for, um, you know, getting an edge in the market. One is the daily log return. Every model without fail when I'm dealing with finance in machine learning every single model has been better with daily log return. So I add that into basically everything and then co-integration with Z-score like th this I'm just doing every time. Uh, and again, you could, you know, you can add more stocks in your first go, but here we'll just get that data and I'm just going to save this as, I don't know, I'm going to call it my base file. Now you'll notice there's this checkbox here. Normally you'll never check this. But what it does is instead of putting the data in columns, so you have all your Apple open, high, low, close, and then you have your Google open, high, low, close, is it only has open, high, low, close, etc., and puts Google underneath Apple. So it puts everything in one long data set. And there are reasons which we'll do in, in subsequent videos for why you want you might want the data like that. You can check this and uncheck it, see the difference yourself. It's really no big deal. But here, let's just go and run this base um, file over here. So it'll go and fetch the data there, it's done. And we can go and take a look at it. So if we go over to the data engineer, which is this icon down here, and I select that um, base file, you can see here's our data, right? So I've got all my Apple data and all my Google data here as well. And I've got the spread, I've got the Z score, and obviously there's, you know, uh, rolling moving averages, etc. in that calculation. So any data it couldn't see because it's not in the data set, it's got blanks here for. You can you can remove those very quickly. You just go to transform features, drop in a and there you go. Um, that removes any blanks, uh, etc. So if I go back to view the table, uh, you'll see all the blanks have gone, etc. Uh, also in transform features, you can delete things, same things you could do before, but you also have co-integration here. So you can select co-integration. And in this part in data engineer, you can actually change the rolling window for the Z-score, right? So if you want the Z-score to compare the current figure to the rolling average over the past, say, 40 steps or 10 steps or whatever, you can actually add that here. Um, so you don't have to add the Z-score and co-integration on the data builder itself. Um, here, you know, technical analysis, same thing as before, you can add in many at the same time. So, you know, for example, and it'll tell you like what feature names you need. If you don't have that feature name, you can't do it. And then, you know, here, the condition side is actually what I'm most excited about. You can come up with any condition and label that however you want. So I'm going to be doing videos on that uh, to explain that to people. And then there's machine learning prep. So you know, I can analyze the file and it will tell me whether something should be, um, uh, you know, changed. So, for example, if I wanted date time in the data set for machine learning, I can encode date time, uh, etc. And so I'll be talking a lot about that. There's some seriously awesome stuff coming up on machine learning that uh, also I wanted to thank my cousin Jacques for. So I'm going to do a whole video talking about Jacques. <laughs> I don't know if you'd appreciate that or not. So Jacques is my cousin and he's basically a genius when it comes to this stuff. And, you know, he helped me a lot 
um, as well to really make the machine learning side like exceptionally good. So that's basically the look and feel of the platform. Those are the main changes made to the data side. You know, for the machine learning side, etc., there are changes made here, but they just to make it much easier to understand what's going on. Um, the back testing, same thing, like it's the same kind of thing, but it's just much more intuitive. Uh, so I'll be talking a lot in videos. I might even do like a free Udemy course because I like the way Udemy structures the videos um, so that people can just, you know, learn about the, the principles, but also then how they apply. In terms of RBDEX, um, et cetera, so I'm looking to add Polygon on here. Thank you to the two people who wrote into me to uh, tell me about that. I know that for those who have done the triangular arbitrage, um, you know, course and have actually applied this to Polygon, well, they're finding good opportunities. I can't say they're making money or not because they never said that, but they're finding good opportunities. And a lot of people have said, hey, you know, do Polygon. Two people actually emailed in to say, you know, do Polygon. So I will be looking to add that in. But the difference here on RBDEX now is the layout looks a bit different, but also it shows you in trade one, trade two and trade three, what rates, what coins it returned. And you can compare that to the surface rate here. So, you know, this is actually quite addictive. I find myself clicking on, the, <laughs> I find myself clicking on this a lot. Um, one of the enhancements I'm looking to make to the tool is I'm going to start pre-calculating depth. Um, like right now, there's obviously no good opportunity showing. And in fact, you know, for those of you who sign up for RBDEX, um, oh, here's one, one and a half percent. For those of you who sign up to RBDEX um, here, hoping to make a lot of money, just don't bother. Like I, I know I say this a lot with arbitrage, you know, guys, I've got a whole course out on triangular arbitrage where very smart people have taken that course and they're doing really smart things with it. Right. They know how to code and calculate this stuff because they've done my course. So they know how to do it. Right. So this is not going to be a very competitive product. Right. It's about learning the skills. The other thing I, I really like about this new version is wizard mode. I'd like to call it dark mode, but it's not really dark mode because when coding this up, you know, when you put it in dark mode, I made the colors a little bit more like crypto. -y. <laughs> just because I'm a nerd. But um, so so you'll notice this is like wizard mode, right, which I actually prefer. It's easier on the eyes. Um, you know, this tool is the same. It just looks a bit different. It's a bit neater, more packaged, more concise. Uh, that's the triangular arbitrage. And then the one I love the most other than the machine learning and the data building and data engineer is, you know, the Z score tool. So this works the same. It's just much easier to, um, you know, to filter on things. And also you've got your providers here, right? You can upload your own data set and choose whatever columns you want. For example, here's the base file we ran. You can choose whatever columns you want and run co-integration and Z-score against those columns, right? You can go into FMP and you can put in foreign exchange pairs or commodities or whatever it is. And actually one of the things I think is really cool, I'll show you in a minute, um, but here's also the pre-scanned items, right? So these are updated every hour. The reason these are useful is they give you an idea of what pairs are co-integrated, right? So there's so many, there's so many out there, but you can just filter on those and you can see if they've any have had a big movement in the last hour. Right now, nothing's really moving that much. Um, these ones have moved a lot. So clay and torn, if I click on that, it pre-populates it. You can change this to hourly. Um, this is now using Binance, obviously. Uh, etc. So this spread here looked healthy up until here. So you can see here where it crosses the zero a lot. And actually, I'll do another video on this too. But uh, I noticed that Neo USDT and uh, Dodo USDT, um, the, this is a really strong co-integrated pair. So I've mentioned this to some people on email. Um, but take a look at this pair, right? Look at how it crosses the zero, how often uh, lately it seems to have sprung up here. You can see the Z-score went nuts, um, but this is a really good pair. So one of the things I'm quite excited about, again, going talking about FMP, because I think their data is awesome. You go to commodity and if I hit star select all, you can see all the commodities available too, right? So you can run platinum, live cattle, like, like you can check relationships and stuff for like literally anything right? You can download the data into Excel as well if you want to put in your own formulas and, and re-upload it back. 
but you can do so much here. Um, so I know this video was very rushed. Uh, it's just because I know a lot of people like, whoa, what happened, you know, with the tool, it looks completely different and it can be quite jarring, but it's a hundred times better. And as long as you understand roughly how to navigate this and what you can do, you're good to go. So that's all this video is about. I don't want to take up more of your time. Take care and talk soon.